Hello, welcome to CNBC TV 18. Hyatt Hotels delivered strong growth in 2023. The multinational hotel chain is witnessing elevated demand for leisure travel and business travel. The hotel currently has 50 properties across Southwest Asia, which includes 48 in India. By end of 2024, Hyatt will have 58 hotels in India and Southwest Asia. The company is looking at 50 more properties in 28 new markets over the next five years. Joining me now to talk about the global hotel demand and his outlook on India is Mark Hoplomazian, CEO of Hyatt Hotels Corporation. Mark, uh, thank you very much for joining us here on CNBC TV 18. Let me begin by asking you about the year gone by for Hyatt. One of the big highlights was selling of $2 billion of assets. Why was this important for the company? Sure. Well, you know, we began um, a process back in 2017 that was really oriented towards um, selling down the hotel portfolio that we owned and freeing up capital to make new investments, new investments in new platforms for growth um, that did not include as capital intensive of a profile as the ownership of our owned assets uh, had. So during that period of time, We've sold over $4 billion worth of real estate assets, and we've made over $3.5 billion of acquisitions of, of platforms that are in, uh, in new brands and management of hotels. So we've doubled the number of luxury hotels, we've tripled the number of resorts, and we've quintupled the number of, of lifestyle hotels we have, ha we have as part of the portfolio over that period of time. So strategically, we were looking to use capital to expand into certain areas that we considered to be highly relevant to our strategy going forward for the high-end traveler. And in order to fund that, we sold some hotels um, to do so. So that was really the genesis and our execution against it. Okay, that brings me to my next question. What does the global outlook for hotel demand really look like at this juncture? The outlook for global hotel demand in 24 is very strong. Uh, I think the globally, what we're seeing is a continued increase in demand, especially leisure. Leisure demand has been the strongest sector segment by far since uh, COVID uh, came to an end. The demand level has been high and supply has been actually relatively lower because not as many hotels got built over the last five years as you might see in a normal time. So the dynamics, therefore, are uh, favorable to pricing for the hotel business and also increased levels of occupancy over time. Could you also elaborate on your global expansion plans for uh, 2024? So we, we have tre tremendous expansion plans in 24. We ended the year of 2023 with the biggest pipeline of hotels around the world, 127,000 rooms. Uh, to a total of 330,000 rooms in our total portfolio as it exists today. So a significant proportion, about 40% of our existing hotel base is what exists in our pipeline for growth going forward. We expect to have a number of openings here in India where I'm sitting with you uh, from Bangalore, uh, in China, in Japan, and in the United States and throughout Europe. Um, the Middle East is also starting to increase significantly. We'll have, we'll have some new openings in Saudi Arabia this year. Um, so we're seeing expansion across many, many markets in the, in the world. What's going to be the strategy for India specifically and importance of India among your top markets? India is already a significant market for us. Uh, I think we're, it, it is number two or three, uh, sorry, three or four in terms of our current and prospective presence. Uh, that is, we have 50 hotels open. We have 50 hotels in the pipeline here in India. Um, and so we, we will have um, an even broader platform of those 50 hotels that we are opening, uh, not all of which are op being opened in 2024, by the way. It'll open, th these will open over the next several years. We're entering into 28 new markets in India. And that's really notable because it's really a reflection of the fact that Indians are discovering their own country in a more pronounced way, and leisure travel has been the big driver. So we're very excited about that. Um, I've been a big supporter and, and, and a bull on India since I've been in my position, which is over 17 years now. It's been a tough period during which uh, it's been difficult to make money in all environments, 
oftentimes we've, we've had a situation in which uh, capital formation was quite difficult. But uh, in the main, I was always a believer that the dem demographic profile, but also the, the tremendous natural uh, resource that is India um, between history and magnificent alternative environments would attract travelers for, for, for a very long time. So very much uh, a believer in the future of India. Now, when it comes to your global revenues, what is the kind of revenue contribution that you're looking at from India? Yes, so if you look at um, a total revenue base, excluding some, we have a 50% joint venture interest in a now public company called Juniper Hotels. So I'm leaving that aside because that's an ownership uh, base. But if you just look at it from a, uh, a chain, a chain of uh, chain results for the hotels. It's less than 10% today, um, and I think will continue to grow at a faster rate than most of the rest of the world. And so I think that that will that percentage will increase over time, but it's still a relatively small amount. And the reason for that is because the U.S. was our was the market in which we began, and we have such a large presence there. Uh, nonetheless, I think that uh, if you if you ask me a decade from now. Uh, I would say India will be many fold the time, the, the size that we have today. And if you ask me what it would look like in 30 or 40 years, I think it really could easily be the second largest market we have in the, in the company. What will uh, drive the growth of the hotel industry in India, according to you? I think some, probably sometime over the next 20, 20 to 30 years. I think the, the, the secular growth of the economy the fact that uh, India is very, very under hoteled um, when you look at on a per capita basis or, or, or as a percentage of GDP. For example, hospitality in India represents something like 6% of GDP. And in most uh, more, more advanced countries in terms of, I don't mean more advanced in economic terms, I mean more advanced in terms of the build out of hospitality and travel, it's over 10%. So 400 basis points of increase just within India is a reflection of the fact that it's under hoteled and um, the incidence of inbound travel will go up over time. How much is Hyatt looking to invest in India? Is there any guidance that you could give us? Yeah, I mean, right now, unlike all of our, all of our um, uh, competitors outside of India, that is companies that are multi-brand, multinational businesses that operate in India, hotel companies in particular, we have by far the largest investment in India. We, we invested directly in property development over the last 25 years. Um, and that is within the Juniper JV that we have that is now public. Um, and we own a, a large stake in that, in that business, uh, something like 38% of the company. So we already have a very large investment there. And we've invested in building the infrastructure that's required to run a great enterprise here in India. So those are the principal ways in which we've already invested in, in the country. But, but again, what about uh, investment plans for the future? Yeah, in the future, I don't see us investing further in property development. I think Juniper itself will be a growth vehicle and will acquire other hotels. Um, I'm not sure that that will require us putting additional capital into Juniper because it is a public company and has its own capital base. Uh, so the, the kinds of investments we will be making are more in human capital, in marketing and sales infrastructure, and in digital and technology assets. Um, so uh, that, that is the nature of those investments. Um, and I don't have a, a specific figure for you in terms of uh, the costs of those things over the next several years, but it's going to be, uh, I think, designed to actually allow us to grow faster and do more in India than we, than we do today. How does the hospitality sector get impacted by the geopolitical situation that we are in currently and the two wars that uh, the world continues to face? Yes. So, look, um, I think the economic outlook in general for the global economy is positive. It is also true uh, that there are geopolitical strains and stresses across the world. Yes, there's a large scale war underway in Europe. Uh, and there are other geopolitical moves that are underway that are creating stresses, whether that's um, a China-Taiwan issue or 
uh, other things that are that are percolating uh, that that relate to um, the global sense of peace and stability, like Israel and Gaza. So I would say, generally speaking, people don't like uncertainty and people don't like uh, stresses where there's danger involved. That's a pretty obvious statement, of course, but it does hurt travel. And so we've seen in the past when there have been disruptions, whether that was the first Gulf War back in 1990-91 or 9-11 or um, you know, the more recent uh, war in, in Europe, it does affect travel. And people do trade away from areas where um, there are areas of conflict. So yes, I think all of that is not good for travel. Um, and so I pray that we will find much more peace in this world. Finally, leave us with three thoughts about India. If we were to ask you about three focus points, what would that be? Three focus points for India. Okay, first, um, discovery of the country by Indians. Uh, the leisure sector has grown faster than, than all others, and it's been domestic travel primarily. When you look at domestic versus inbound leisure spending, it's something like seven to one in terms of size of total uh, dollars being spent in country uh, by Indians or by inbound travelers. So I would say that's, that's an area of focus. Have to continue to expand your alternatives in leisure. Second, the growth of uh, the economy is spurring development in different places. Um, there are already really outstanding examples of great commercial activity that's been um, concentrated in certain areas. And I, I would point to a place like Gachabali outside of Hyderabad, uh, which has been has built up a tremendous level of, of sort of a critical mass of technology businesses and that will continue to grow. And those kinds of developments need hotels. And more and more mixed use development will come along with those kinds of developments. Third, and most important to me is uh, the people of India. I think we have to continuously look at ways in which we can increase the well-being of our own colleagues, our own employees. And I think every business should take, take care to do that, but especially in hospitality. It is the um, secret weapon that India has over any other country because the natural DNA is of tremendous warmth and engagement. And that's actually what sets India apart in terms of the experience that people have when they get off the plane and start to uh, enjoy this country. All right. Mark Hoplomazian, thank you very much for joining us here on CNBC TV 18.